Earlier this week, the CVE program appeared that it was dangerously close to a shutdown with less than 24 hours notice. This caused cybersecurity professionals all over the world to sound the warning bell on how dangerous this would be and the negative impact it would have on cybersecurity processes, systems, and infrastructure all over the globe. The program was saved at least for the next 11 months at the last minute by a contract extension. If you missed any of these details or you're wondering why this all matters, I'm going to break it all down in this video. First off, I'm going to quickly go over what the CVE program is and how it works. If you're already up to date with this and you just want to hear about the drama from this week, then use the timestamps below to skip ahead. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. This is a database that is free and publicly accessible that catalogs vulnerabilities for both software and hardware. When a CVE is made public, it's assigned a unique identifier called a CVE number and details about the product impacted, the version of the product, and the actual vulnerability itself are stored in the catalog. Each CVE is given a criticality score from 0 to 10, which attempts to quantify the potential impact of the vulnerability. The scoring system used is called the CVSS, which stands for the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. The CVE database is used worldwide by cybersecurity practitioners on both the blue side and the red side to look up vulnerabilities for software. It allows IT professionals and cybersecurity practitioners to understand the impact of vulnerabilities that may be in systems deployed in their networks, and it allows them to prioritize which ones they should patch first based on the CVSS score. Not only is the CVE database used by individuals, it's used by countless tools that help to automate vulnerability management, patch management, and vulnerability scanning. Because of this, the immediate removal of the CVE program would have a very large impact on cybersecurity systems, individuals, processes, tools, you name it, all over the world. The CVE program and CVE database are run and maintained by MITRE, a not-for-profit organization based out of the U.S. Funding for the CVE program is provided by the Department of Homeland Security and CISA. MITRE is at the center of the CVE program and are the glue that holds it together. Not only do they maintain the CVE database, but they also work with vendors and cybersecurity professionals alike to make sure that vulnerabilities can be reported and taken into one singular database. If MITRE were to shut down the CVE program, it's likely multiple parties would try to scramble in and create their own vulnerability programs in databases, some of them for profit. This would most likely create a fracture in the cybersecurity industry where different tools and frameworks and systems rely on different databases. This causes an issue because we can't talk about vulnerabilities using the same ID and terminology. Maybe you've experienced this before if you're into video games and your friends are all on different platforms and therefore it's very difficult for you to all play the same game. The CVE database has been around since 1999. Because of this and because it is free and publicly accessible, it has widely been adopted as the standard and the one singular vulnerability database that's used across the entire industry. If multiple databases were to pop up, it's likely that the industry would have a very hard time coming to one consensus and that there would be no one singular database that could be used. This is why the pending news of the CVE shutdown caused such concern in many cybersecurity communities. Not because of the immediate impact it would have in the short term, but because of the loss of a singular database that could be used by cybersecurity professionals. Now that we understand what the CVE program is and why it's so important, let's talk about how we got here. As I mentioned before, MITRE is a not-for-profit organization, and it receives its funding to run the CVE program through contracts from the Department of Homeland Security and CISA. Earlier this week on Tuesday, an internal letter that was sent to CVE board members was leaked out to the public. This letter was warning of the potential possible shutdown to the CVE program because the contract that funds it was set to expire on Wednesday, April 16th. This, of course, caused that public outcry from security practitioners and professionals all over the world. And at the last minute, the contract was extended by CISA at least for another 11 months. Are you looking to up your cybersecurity skills in 2025? 
the TCM Security Academy has you covered with our affordable and high quality courses. In addition to the 25 plus courses, we also offer certifications that feature hands-on labs specifically built to test the skills you need to succeed in cybersecurity jobs. No multiple choice questions guaranteed. Explore certification and career pathways at certifications.tcm-sec.com. A lot of people, myself included, never thought to question where the funding for the MITRE organization and the CVE program came from because it has been a staple of cybersecurity, at least for as long as I have even known about that term. Even though the program has been saved at least for 11 months with a contract extension, this has brought up a lot of very good discussions about the future of the CVE program and if we should be trusting a public program that is funded by a government that could remove its funding at any time. I've yet to hear of any good alternatives or solutions proposed that I personally think are a good idea. However, I'm sure over the next 11 months, there are going to be many proposed, especially as it's on many people's minds when we get closer to the expiration of the current contract in 11 months. One thing that I personally don't think will be a good solution is if a corporate entity, at least just one of them, takes over the database and program and maintains it itself. I'd love to hear what you think about this whole situation, if you have any good solutions or you think we should just drop the CVE program altogether. I have heard some hot takes that provide compelling arguments about why the CVE system is outdated and we would be okay if it just went away. If you enjoyed this video, you want to learn more about cybersecurity, keep up to date with breaking news, or just hear more of me talking, make sure you are subscribed to the TCM Security YouTube channel.